our challenge is to look at the future and it's to understand what's going to be coming up next year and beyond. Um, that challenge is, is in, involved in a number of different ways. Uh, we look at what experts think, we look at what statistics are proving, but we also look around us and observe what businesses are doing, what brands are doing and how consumers are behaving. I was interested in how you've uh, identified certain groups within consumers and the Joneses are an interesting group now. now tell me about them. Generation Jones for us has presented um, quite an interesting argument recently. Um, Generation Jones are 45 to 55 year olds and every now and then there are certain consumer groups who stand up and start talking. Uh, they've been quite quiet, they're sandwiched between the kind of the trendy Gen Xs, the kind of up to 45 year olds, who got a lot of press for inventing MTV and slacker culture, and then the boomers, the kind of plus 55s, who promised the world and delivered nothing. And now you have this group in the middle who are starting to get very, very political. If you think about Obama, he is a Generation Joneser versus Bush, who was a boomer. Um, and increasingly their spend throughout Europe and America is, is dominating uh, the retail, um, high street. But also just their attitudes to uh, politics, their attitudes to morals, attitudes to ethics. A lot of things are starting to come through. I remember the days of only a decade ago of, of the big high street brands who would look down on the consumer from their ivory towers. And mm -hmm. that doesn't happen anymore. You've mentioned the internet several times mm -hmm. and how influential it is, but also the handheld device is becoming mm -hmm. very popular. Uh, this year, I suppose, Twitter has been a phenomenon. Mm -hmm. I mean, tell me what you think about that. Is that going to last? Is it going to still be here in two years' time? Mm -hmm. Is it still going to be as potentially influential? I think Twitter, social media has been an interesting space, and I think Twitter, as you, as you rightly say, has been a... Um, a household name for people to get their head around what is social media. Um, Twitter will, as a brand, grow. It will be snapped up by the likes of Google, I'm sure. Um, and there'll be a new, new name that comes onto, into the vocabulary. But essentially what it started to do is look at the nature of a micro blog, the nature of that, that short burst of, of, of thought or the short burst of ideas. Um, and that is changing the media landscape. It's changing how people consume. And if you look at anyone who's under the age of 25, that's normal. So when they start to age, when they start to educate their children, when they start to reach later life, that norm, that sense of what is normal, uh, will change. And I think um, there will be a new player next year, I'm sure. Um, but it is that slightly faster paced, we call it free range, uh, approach to consumption that people are getting used to. The whole world economy is in a bit of a mess, the UK particularly so. Um, we didn't get many clues out of the PBR, but we all mm. know some kind of austerity is coming. Mm -hmm. Does that mean consumerism goes on hold? Uh, no. Um, consumerism doesn't go on hold in a recession. Is that wishful thinking or you're sure I, about that? I think it's a different, it's a recalibration of what value means. The last 18 months, we, we forecasted four years ago a new austerity as a trend. And that sense of sobriety, and I think sobriety is an interesting um, angle to think about a recession in the 21st century. Sobriety equals uh, awaken up, waking up by consumers, uh, a sense of inquisition, a sense of looking at a brand in a different way, looking at choice and making the right decision. Um, that sense of austerity is also creating what we call no frills affluence. No frills is whereby people are saying what value actually means is quality, meaning and sustainability, which is a a quite a nice dream space to be in if you're, if you're thinking about the future of world poverty and the environment, but increasingly consumers have sobered up and the next decade we've called the turbulent teens. And like any good teenager, ups and downs and lots of CEOs being sent to their penthouses. And I think increasingly that the pressures on businesses, the recession, the environment and that sense of consumers asking or taking one step back and actually asking themselves, do I really need this product? are going to change the nature of what shopping is. But that doesn't mean shopping will stop.